guys are studying, among other things that she wanted me to kind of talk with you about today, was what's called situational ethics. Is that, is that what you've been studying? What do you, if I asked you to tell me what you think that term means, what you learned that that term means, how would you describe that term? It's like if you're in a situation, you need to think about your choices and what the right choice is. Yeah, the, 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 the way that you can, that you're expected to behave sometimes can depend on the situation that you're in. Is that, is that right? And what were you going to say? Um, Any time you're faced between, when you're in a situation, when you're faced between two decisions, like choosing what you're going to eat for lunch. Yeah, I mean, we. Um, I guess what you're saying, uh, what I hear you saying is that sometimes you're in a situation where you have to make a choice between things, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's like how you handle the situation if you handle it well, or if you don't handle it. Yes, that's part of it too, and that's good. I hadn't, I hadn't really thought of that particular angle of it, but it, situational ethics probably also includes the idea that if you're in a given situation, there's a, hopefully there's a right way and a wrong way to handle it, and um, maybe it includes also the idea of handling it in the right way, so that you can be proud of yourself later for how you did something. Fair. Um, I think that one of the reasons I was asked to speak about that idea is that that happens a lot in, in my life. I mean, this is not just this this idea of situational ethics is not just something that you're taught in a classroom that doesn't have application to real life. It has application to to my life as an adult and it has application to a lot of people's lives. Um, although I'm a lawyer, uh, one example, and I can, I can talk all day about situations that, situational ethics as it applies to me and to my job, but not just lawyers. I mean, if you're a police officer, for example, and somebody has reported that maybe their neighbor has gotten into an argument with them and. Thrown, a, thrown something at their house or in some way damaged their property and they call the police. And the police officer is there and he thinks, I'm not absolutely sure it happened, but I can't really tell. Um, does, he, does he have to arrest that person or not? What, what do you think? I mean, if an officer is called there and can, can a police officer, for example, be faced with difficult situations as, as to whether or not he puts his judgment into it and just says, I'm not going to arrest you at all, or takes the person in and kind of lets the process work. That, yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your I didn't catch anybody's name actually. What's your name? Skylar. Hyla? Skylar. Skylar? Right, okay. Thank you, Skylar. Um I think that if the police officer doesn't have proof, I don't think he should arrest him or arrest the person. Okay. But he should like question him. Okay. Um, what if there's some proof, but then there's some things that say, well, maybe, maybe not. You didn't really question him, so. I'm sorry. Try, I would try to find more evidence and okay. still question. Okay. Can there be situations where some, where no matter how hard a police officer, for example, might try to find evidence, he's got all the evidence that's really there to be to be had. I mean, he's got one person saying this and another person saying that, and he wasn't there, and he doesn't know. What do you do then? It's, I mean, either you continue to try and find answers or you just give up. Right. Um, right. Um, and maybe when when you say give up, um, 
Does that mean maybe letting somebody else? Yeah. Some, can that mean? I'm sorry. What's your name? Will. Will. Okay. I didn't mean to interrupt you. It sounded like you were saying something. So like, I was like, give up as in just put the case away. Don't bother with it anymore. Okay. So you can't find any evidence to either prove it right or wrong. Right. Right. But that's a, that can be a difficult decision to make because, I mean, in the example that we were talking about, it's a pretty small thing, but maybe it's something serious. And if he can't, if he thinks that I can't tell, and he just kind of gives up, then maybe he's led somebody who might have actually done something really wrong get away with it and not, and not have to answer for it at all. What's your name? Sarah. Sarah? So one of the things that, I mean, going back, I think, Will, to something you said, um, and I think it was you that said it, that sometimes situational ethics can include the idea of trying to do the right thing in the situation that you're in. Is that, is that was that you that said that? Or did I not have a very good memory of that? Or am I not paraphrasing it right now? But, but it can include, or maybe it wasn't, maybe it wasn't, or maybe it was somebody else. Can it include the idea of kind of being in a difficult position and just trying to have to do the best you can with the information that you have? So that's, you know, that's an example of where it can happen in, in everyday life uh, that you have to make a pretty difficult decision because if you're in that situation as an officer, as a police officer, for example, and you decide that I can't tell and you just kind of walk away from it, Maybe you're letting somebody go on who, who did something wrong, but if you make the opposite decision, maybe you're taking somebody in who didn't do anything wrong. And you really, there's just one side of the story and another side of the story, and is that fair? Yeah. 